Okay, Math 31, a common phrase in math is two points determine a unique line. Two points of interest for this section will be the intercepts of the line. We will be finding intercepts algebraically and using them to quickly plot our graphs. And in a moment, I'm about to define the intercepts for a line. And while it's definitely true that these, this definition holds for the intercept of a line, it also holds for the intercepts of all of the functions that we're gonna be dealing with in this class. We start with lines in 31 just to review up topics that you've seen before, but we're gonna extend beyond it. We're gonna look at parabolas, exponential functions, rational functions, logarithms, and these definitions for their intercepts, it holds true of lines and all of those functions. So let, let's take a look at it through the lens of a line. So an intercept of a line is any point where the line and an axis, or potentially axes, of the coordinate system intersect. There are two types of intercepts of a line sketched on the coordinate system with an x-axis and a y-axis. So an x-intercept of a line is a point where the line and the x-axis intersect. The y-coordinate of the x-intercept is zero. All right, so the y-value on the x-intercept is zero. The opposite letter is zeroed out. A y-intercept of a line is a point where the line and the y-axis intersect. The x-coordinate of the y-intercept is zero. So again, take note, when you have the y-intercept, it's the x-coordinate that's zero. When you have the x-intercept, it's the y-coordinate zero. So it's the other one that zeroes out. All right, and let me just show you a couple of graphic representations of these intercepts, right? So if this was a line, right, you can see here your y-intercept, right? The line is intersecting with the y-axis. Where over here on your x-intercept, our line that we are graphing is intersecting the y-axis, excuse me, the x-axis. And you can imagine, let's, let's take a look at this x-intercept, right? I want you to think about how on the x-intercept, the y-coordinate is zero. All right, so this is, if I'm graphing, this looks like it's around maybe negative 1.8 in the x direction and then zero in the y direction. And I mentioned this because I'm gonna repeat multiple times in this, um, this class that y's move you up and down, right? X's move you left and right, y's move you up and down. And you can see from the origin, I have neither moved up nor down. Right? I'm still stuck at the origin. That's why the y-intercept or excuse me, the y-coordinate of your x-intercept is zero. And from the origin, you can see I moved left. That's why the x-coordinate changed. And on the flip of that, if we were gonna count, pretend these squares were each about one unit, this might be the number, this might be like 1.2 comma zero. So again, you can see that, oh gosh, I can do my own y-intercepts. I mean, I wanted to put that there to see if you were paying attention. So this is really a zero comma 1.2, all right? because, and the reason I caught it is because I was about to say, I can tell that from the origin I've moved up, that would affect my Y coordinate. And I can also tell from the origin, I've not moved left or right. I'm still stuck on this Y axis. That's why my X coordinate is zero, All right? And I had mentioned before, it's true for lines, but it's true for any graphs, X intercept, Y intercept. And even though I don't sketch it here, it's, this graph is likely gonna come back down or it's possible for it to come back down and Oops, intersect the y, excuse me, the x-axis again, and I, I very likely have another x-intercept. Right. So when we move beyond lines, it's possible to have multiple x-intercepts. You will only have one y-intercept per function. If you had more than y, one y-intercept, your, your graph would fail to be a function. It wouldn't pass the vertical line test. So in terms of finding these points, we have a, a little bit of algebra here, right? So to find an x-intercept, let y equal zero and solve for x. To find the y-intercept, set x to zero and solve for y. So it's always the opposite letter we're zeroing out. So we're gonna practice that right now. So if I scooch this up, so it's all in view for us, all right, we're gonna take a look at example four. It says find the intercepts, plural, of the equation four minus three x equaling two y, then sketch the graph using only the intercepts. So let's go through this and find the intercepts. First of all, I can see this graph, or this, this equation is going to wind up being a line because the highest power on x is one and the highest power on y is one. And when you have first degree terms like this, that's a linear function. All right, when we move beyond that, or we start taking fractions or ratios of linear functions, we're gonna get into something else. And we will, we're gonna visit all of that in this class, but we're starting with lines. So let's find the x-intercept. 
All right, if I wanna find the x-intercept, I'm going to let y equal zero. So if I let y equal zero, my equation then turns into 4x minus three equals zero because two times zero is zero. And again, if I wanna find the x-intercept, I set y to zero and solve for x. Well, I can solve for x. I can add three to both sides and get 4x equaling three. And then I'm gonna divide by four and I'm gonna get x equaling three-fourths. Now, when you're in my class, you need to write these up as intercepts. And when I say write them up as intercepts, that means there's an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So if you just tell me x is equal to three-fourths, I'm not gonna give you full credit on that. In order to be an x-intercept, you need to have an ordered pair. Now the x-coordinate is three-fourths, but the y-coordinate is zero. So this is the answer I'm looking for. And just since this is our first time probably seeing this, if you ever see me write um, the three little dots that kind of look like a triangle, that's math speak. We like to say the phrase therefore, makes us sound fancy. So therefore the x-intercept is 3 fourths comma zero. And I'll graph that in just a moment. We still need to find the y-intercept, right? Because the directions said find the intercepts, both of them, and then we'll sketch. Now to find the y-intercept, I'm gonna let x equal zero. So if I let x equal zero here, this term's gonna go away, and I'm gonna have negative three equaling two y. All right, now I'm gonna divide both sides by two, and I think you can see here that I am getting y is equal to negative three halves. All right, but again, think, you're in my class now, so you get to put, follow some of my rules. Um, I would not give this full credit. If I want an intercept, it requires an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So for this y-intercept, we know the x-coordinate is zero and the y-coordinate is negative three halves. So this is the answer I'm looking for. You don't have to have the therefore symbol, but I need to see the zero and the negative three halves. All right, so we found both of our intercepts, great. Let's go ahead and sketch them. So again, more rules of mine, label and scale your axes. So I've labeled them x and y. In terms of scaling, if I look at these numbers, they're kind of small. I don't need this to be 11 units. I think because I have fractions here, I'm actually gonna make every two squares equal to one unit. So I'll only go out to five here, because this will be five, four, three, two, one. But you can see what I'm saying. I made every two squares one unit, so this is one half, one, one and a half, two. And let me scale up my y-axis while I'm here. All right, so what do we have? We have 3 fourths comma zero, somewhere in there, and then I have zero, negative three and a half. So I've got that point there. So let's go ahead, let me get my ruler. Again, two points determine a unique line. So if I'm looking at this, there we go. All right, my domain's all real numbers, my range is all real numbers. And you might even be thinking to yourself, well, is this the only way to graph this line? Absolutely not. Maybe you were thinking, you know, I think I'm gonna divide everything by two because then I'd have four X minus three over two equaling two Y over two. These will cancel out. And then if I rewrite that, I get Y equaling two X minus three halves and you have it in slope intercept form and you can go from there. Totally legit, right? I'm still starting at negative three halves, right? And I'm gonna go up two over one, up two over one. So that will totally work if you wanna play that out. And really, I was doing up two, this would have been over one, I would have landed right here. Uh, when I was saying that up two over one, I pointed to the wrong part. Up two over one, up two over one. Totally fine to do it that way. All right, but I just wanted us to practice going through and doing it with the intercepts, okay? All right, so with that, we're gonna flip the page and we're gonna revisit the distance formula. I'll see you in a bit, gang, bye.